Thank you. You're a great audience. I didn't do anything. You're clapping. That's good. That's good. I can't speak uh, Italian. I'm sorry. I just was impressed by the amount of words which are coming out when Italian are speaking. It's just incredible. So, so many words in so little time. It's, it's incredible. So, um, yeah, thank you for having me, first of all. Uh, I'm really proud to be part of this conference, one of my favorite conferences, to be honest, in one of my favorite cities in uh, Europe with one of my uh, favorite audiences, honestly. So uh, it's really, really great for me to be here um, because we all share the same passion, which is Angular development, right? And um, I personally find myself always when we, uh, when we are the customer uh, or I find myself in my home office, my cozy home office, and I'm developing an application or well, we are in that particular meeting at a customer and we are trying to, to, to figure out how a front end works and how we want to, to, to uh, develop it. I uh, find myself in the meeting and always the question arises, can we, can we also have a mobile app of, of, of the front end we're trying to, to develop, right? And uh, we're always thinking about this, so this meeting comes and this question comes, and we also have the fact that we have all the browsers, you know? And then there is, how can we develop uh, an application which also runs on all the browsers, like Netscape Navigator or something, which is not possible. Do you know still who knows Netscape Navigator? Oh, the few ones. We're old, are we? Um, so yeah, I sit there in the meeting and I'm asking myself the question and I have to tell the customer, and, uh, or I sit in my cozy home office and ask myself this, right? And with this, I would like to welcome you to my talk, Cross-Platform Apps with Angular and .NET Core, because we, we would, I would like to skip out a little bit of our comfort zone, Angular, because there's more in the outside world, right? There's .NET Core, for example, right? And as I'm also a back-end developer, developer from time to time, it's really interesting for me to also uh, share the light on what's happening behind the scenes, like a line of business app, right? So we don't want to do this Hello World. We're trying to cover it a little bit, a line of business app, as much as we can in 25 minutes, 22 uh, to be exact. Right? Before we start with this, before we dive into how can we take a web app and do like a mobile and a desktop app out of it, I would like to um, bring up the first principle you have to consider if we're starting with this. So the most important thing with this is that we are trying to separate the server from the client. You need two different artifacts if you're starting with this. This can be a GraphQL API, this can be a REST API, which should be an artifact which you can deploy on any server. Right? It should be another artifact which is the client. Um, and Angular CLI gives you that particular artifact we build. We have that artifact, we can develop it uh, or deploy it at any server and then use it. Right? So that's the most important thing because if we don't have this, we can't take the client thing and put it in something else and put it in something else as well. Right, so this is very difficult. I've seen solutions um, also coming from the C sharp side. Any C sharp ASP.NET Core .NET Core developers here? Yes, they're my friends. I see you. Great. Um, I've seen solutions where the first request comes in and we have the CS HTML file, so it's server rendered, and then it sends me back an HTML file where then the Angular files are in, right? So that's server bound. We don't need this. We can't do this solution I'm trying to, to tell you in the next minutes with that particular uh, way of working. So we need server and client separated. And the only way they are communicating is HTTP and if you want WebSockets. Right, so it would also be long polling and stuff like that, but the HTTP line is the only way they are communicating, right? And uh, I just want to show you quickly, I should have started this before, let's go to our demo. Uh, I want to show you quickly the sample app just to put you in place that you know what we are talking about. This is the application we're trying to port um, today from A to B, from a web application to a mobile application to a desktop application. And I thought about writing a Tinder for dogs. That was the original idea. Um, not particularly for the dogs, but you swipe left or right for the dogs, and then you're getting to know the owner. That was the particular idea. It came out, I wrote a dog sample app, a dog rating app. So here we have the web application. And here we have a dog. This is my dog. This is Winston. Winston, this is the audience. Audience, this is Winston. He's a golden retriever. He's one year old, and he's the best boy in town. So this is the web application 
we will work with. You know, you can log in, log out. I'm using Auth0, by the way, for authentication, which is a great product, makes it relatively easy, uh, or really easy to uh, get authentication going. So you can rate him by pause. You can give him one to five pause, giving him five pause, then he fades out, and then another picture of Winston O dot coms, and then you can rate it, right? So that's the application. We also have, you have seen this nice little toasts here in the web application saying what's, what's going on, right? So we also have uh, my doggo. So when you log in, you see like this. You can delete the doggos. You can add a new doggo, but we will explore this later. You can also see here. Can you see this? Right there, we have we are running on web. This is just a helper for me to know which platform I'm on because when you do this a whole day, you don't know which platform you're on, right? So I can see what's going on there. So basically, we have an about page just to get some few information um, where we are. So that's. Basically, the application. All right. So let's take a look at the backend. Step out of the comfort zone. This is a .NET backend for the application we have just seen. This is a .NET Core backend, and we are working with um, controllers. Controllers can be uh, can have attributes. In this case, we have an authorized attribute. Um, we are checking for the privilege of accessing the API, and then we can request data from it. Um, we have a get method. You can see it's called get all doggos. We have the HTTP get attributed. So when a get request comes, this method is being invoked, and then we're getting back some data. We also have like a get requests if we want to have a single doggo, which is called get single doggo, also the HTTP get attribute, but we're passing an ID, and with this ID we can then get a single doggo and return it back to the client. And of course, we can also add a doggo with a post request, right? And then we're adding a doggo. It's get automatically serialized and this doggo create DDO, and then we can work with it. So ASP.NET Core does that automatically for you. And this line is particularly important. So what we're doing here is I built something called SignalR, or no, I didn't build something called Signal. I'm using SignalR here. SignalR is for broadcasting events from your web app. Right? It makes real-time communication possible. So what we're doing is here, we are reacting to a post, not only with entering something in the database, but also spreading the word to all connected clients. Right? And this is a really, really powerful tool, which we hopefully see in the back uh, in, the, in the demo later. And of course, we also have a put request here where we can rate doggos. We just updated, and again, I'm throwing the event of a doggo being rated. Right? All right, this one is really hosted on Azure, so I could scale it if I wanted to. You can see that here, I just had to blank out my subscription. There's not much going on because I'm the only person using it, but this is like a real world app. This is nothing which runs locally. This could scale. I could scale this ultimately, um, and what I also did was, um, because of getting a little bit more line of business in it, I'm also using a blob storage for the pictures. So I'm not working with uh, base 46, base 64 strings, um, so I'm really working with pictures. This is also running on Azure. So we have now a back end, right? And we have a blob storage, and then we have a front end, which we take a look at now, and those things are communicating with each other, right? So this is, should be like a line of business example for you. Okay. So let's have a look at the front end. And in the front end, what are we trying to support? Of course, we're trying to support browsers. We do, of course. You do an engine new, you have your Angular app, and then you get everything going, and then you're fine, right? So this is browsers. But we also want to consider getting this on a desktop. Why desktop? I just mentioned it in the beginning, because there are customers who have, like, like I said, Netscape Navigator, and even worse, Internet Explorer or something, right? And they. If you tell them, please update to the latest Chrome, they will set your house on fire because they can't, right? So there is an IT administrator who has never heard of those things, right? They can't, but you want them to use your latest tools and the latest features from Chrome, and they're all fancy and sexy, and you, you don't know what. So you can't always tell your customer what browser to use. So wouldn't it be nice we would ship also a desktop application for Windows and Linux, where you just can click on and the application works, right? And also mobile, of course would be nice to support mobile as well, doing an app out of your, uh, out of your web application. An app, not, not the PWA, an app, not the browser which you serve on. We just want to create an app. And all this with a single code base. Single code base is very important. I'm not talking about single code. If anybody wants to tell you you can use the same code for all the devices, they are lying. You can't. There is a point when you develop such an app. You have to say, I'm browser. I'm desktop, I'm mobile, right? And then you can react. Of course, what we're doing is we're using the technologies we love. 
naming HTML, CSS3, and TypeScript. Because, you know, we're Angular developers. We're trying to use Angular for all those things. And you can see here, this is the application on uh, a mobile device in the background and on a desktop and EXE. Um, so I ported this application, and this is what it looks like. It looks the same. I'm literally bad at CSS. I'm literally bad at styling. You can see this here. I'm not any kind of Michelangelo, but uh, yeah, it works. It, it looks doable, right? So this is all I can do. What are we doing for, or what are we taking for putting that on mobile application? We are using this tool. This tool is called Capacitor. Has anybody heard of Capacitor? A few ones, a third in the room, nice. So Capacitor, basically, what it does is it takes your web application and does not build a mobile app. This is very important. What it does is it takes the code and makes a project ready for you, which is either Xcode or it is uh, for Android, Android Studio, I think. Right? And these projects are ready, and then you can use them to build your app. In the best case, you just can, can uh, get it started. Right? So this is what Capacitor does. And what Capacitor also does, it, it gives you access to native features. You can use native features with TypeScript. So what you can do or with JavaScript, what you can do is you can npm install Capacitor Toast, for example. This is just an example. Right? And if we npm install this, we can then use Toasts import toasts from capacitor toast, and then we have an async method which we can use and showing toasts on the platform we are on. And capacitor knows then I am iOS, I am Android, I have to place my uh, notifications like this, or I have to make them like this, right? You don't have to care about this. You can use that particular code and don't care about the platform you're on. And this is how it looks in the emulator. You see we have an icon, we're starting it, we have a splash screen, then we're loading, and you can see that the, um, the notification was Android-like. So we're using native notifications here, as you've seen there, right? So that is the application just built for mobile. You can also use the camera, right? So if you're using the camera, you have access to it, you can use pictures and upload them. You can also use push notifications. What you also can use is splash screen, like we have just seen in the emulator, right? and so much more. There are so much more things you can use on the native. You can use the battery. You can use the sensor, uh, like what, what kind of, of, of sensor you have uh, in, the, in the mobile phone and stuff like that. So it's really, really powerful. I would really recommend it. So what are we doing? You can even debug it, right? So if I'm, if I'm um, debugging the, the application, I can do it with source maps, and then I have my normal Chrome developer tools and can see what the app is doing on my phone. This is when my phone is connected. Right, then I can debug it if something doesn't work. So this is really powerful, and we have seen in the keynote this morning how powerful Chrome DevTools are. This is one powerful thing of them. So what are we doing for desktop? For desktop, we are using a cool tool called Electron. Electron uh, basically makes the same just for desktop. It takes your web application and takes Chromium and takes the files you did, the JavaScript files, and wraps it inside of Chromium and then you're shipping Chromium, and the user can click on this executable, start in Chromium, and then your application. So this is an Angular CLI new project just running in a window. Right? There's no NPM start involved. It's just an EXE. You click on it, and then you're good. There are even people who transport Windows 95 to Electron. Who knows Windows 95 still? Yeah, the most one. Gosh, we're old. <laughs> but it works. But at this time, it's, it's really, really extreme. So yeah, but it works. You can do it. Let's see some demos for this. So first of all, you have seen, I have to I might do it a little bit like this. All right. So, so you have seen the application here. What I want to do now is um, I want to go into the code a little bit. So how does all the things look like? Um, this is a normal Angular CLI project which has a lot of built folders which I added um, to it or which were added automatically to it. So we have a source folder, and of course, this looks familiar. I've built this demo app. It's all open source. You get the links afterwards, so you can check it out. 
Uh, I've built it with NGRX and stuff, but we have like a capacitor config here. So the capacitor config is just a configuration file when you port that thing to mobile apps, right? So you can have the app ID, which is important if you want to register push applications, uh, push notifications, and stuff like that. So this is uh, this is a really really base file you have. So when we're going then for uh, the application, you can see I have authentication already. You can lose a few words about that later. But in common, I have the notifications thing. And this is what I mean with um, you have to tell at some point what you are. So Angular offers you a great way of providing classes. But we are providing an abstract class here, which is called notification service. Because I want my notifications to look native on the mobile app, web-ish on the web app, and desktop-ish on the desktop app. It should be the native one. And I have to tell the code anywhere to do this, right? And what we're doing is we're having an abstract class, which is notification service, and I'm using the use factory here, and I'm passing some dependencies. And you can see that I have a web notification service, a desktop notification service, and a mobile a notification service. So we don't need any app developers um, doing a native application for us. It's all TypeScript, right? So what I can do is uh, I have a platform information service as well, and he tells me what I am on or which platform I'm on. So I have a notification factory passing all the dependencies, and then I'm saying, is Electron, is mobile? And then I can, if I'm Electron, I'm returning the desktop, the mobile, and the web. Uh, if I'm mobile, the mobile, and um, in other cases, I'm turning the web notification service. So if I'm building on web, I have the web notifications. If I'm building on mobile, and this we can check out, hopefully this works, I have the app installed on my phone. I will start this right now, and I will do the... Uh, Spectral Chrome, I've got that here. Hopefully this works. So I can log in. Which doesn't work right now. The about works, so I'm logging. All zero works, perfect. So I can now go to inspect here, and this is the app live on my mobile phone. You can see I'm doing something with it, right? And if I'm just going to my doggos and I'm going back, you can see that uh, you see the doggos loaded. Have you seen it? Yes, perfect. Thank you. You can see the uh, doggos loaded notification, which is, I see it. I don't know why don't you see it. I'm here. But you have the, the notification, which is native for uh, Android. It would be native for five minutes left. Yes. It would be native for iOS as well. Right? So now what I want to do is I want to take that thing and port it to desktop. So let's do this. What I'm doing is I'm having in the package JSON these things here. And I'm doing build desktop and build mobile. And all the steps for building a desktop app or a mobile app, I've covered them in those files here, which are, of course, all open source. So if I'm going to build and doing a build mobile first, what I'm doing is an ng build, then I'm copying all the capacitor assets, splash screen and icon and stuff like that. And I'm syncing the app with capacitor. Basically, what it does is it takes the uh, artifact, which you build from your client side app, and creates that Android project for you. Right? I could start it. I could do it like this. I won't do it, but I just want to show you uh, that time has to be because we just created our Android app. And I could now go to my mobile phone and just start it. Right? So he's updating Android. And now he should ask me. Uh, here you can see it. So I've got my phone plugged in, which is a OnePlus. And now I can go, can develop it live on my phone, or I can do an emulator. Right? But I already did that, so I won't show that again. So what he does is he builds my Angular app, creates an Android Studio project, and now I can project it to my phone or to an emulator if I wanted to. Right? And then I can success this with the Chrome access tools. I won't do that right now. What I want to do is I want to npm run build desktop. There you go. These files are saving me every time I want to go cross-platform. What we're doing is here, we are building Angular with a few uh, parameters. Then we're copying the assets. And then I'm building desktop with an NBX Electron pack Packager. So let's uh, run this through. You can see we are building the desktop. He has done the assets. Now he's building the desktop with Electron stuff. We are packing for 
uh, Linux with pack info Win32. You can also use a 64 architecture. It's no problem. I'm going to my dist folder. I'm having the desktop here. I'm starting the Windows application here. You can see we have a logo. We have a ratemydoggo.exe. I'm just starting it. There you go. There is Winston, the best boy. I can log in. I'm logged in. So we have authentication overall platforms. So what I want to do is now I want to take the web application. I have to start it. So come on, what's going on? What's up? It's vanished. There you go. All right, I'm doing an NPM start here. Oh, no, not there. I'm going here. Doing an NPM start here. There you go. There you go. If you start, we have the application there. And once that starts, I can close that one. And we still have the app running. So compiled successfully. So what you see on the left-hand side is my web application, which is running in the browser. You can see it running on platform web. On the right-hand side, you can see we are running on platform desktop. So I know at runtime which platform I'm on, right? I will start the application now on my phone. And what I want to do is, I want to, OK. I want to take a photo. I will log in because I have native feature access on my app. So I'm going to my doggos, which you can't see now. I'm trying to add a doggo. I'm calling it ng Rome. And um, the breed is perfect. <laughs> and the comment is best conference ever. And I'm taking a picture. And it asks me to, to get it from photos or taking the picture. So now I'm taking a picture. This is my camera. So I'm turning the camera, and we're taking a selfie with all of you. And hopefully this works, right? So I'm taking the picture. Thanks. So I'm getting it there. So I'm pressing OK. So and now I'm doing add doggo. Of course, you are not doggos, but you're the best breed ever. So I'm doing add doggo. I have it here. Hopefully it works. Let the internet work. Let's, I'm, sh I'm shaking. I'm so nervous. No, please show it. Please show it there. Please show the, uh, the, the applications there. Not me. Hello? Hello? Please? Anybody? There it is. There it is. So, thank you. So what we have is um, we are having one code base, TypeScript, which is basically portable from a web application to a desktop app. So all the Netscape navigators, we got you. Then we have the, the, the JavaScript, TypeScript code, and we can port it to a mobile app. And access to native features, we got you as well. So you can use this, right? And in addition to this, I have SignalR connection running all over. So you can keep the applications in sync. If you are adding a project or an entry in any database here, it gets automatically spreaded to all the devices you have. Everywhere where the app runs, it's, it's updated, right? And this is a really cool thing. Of course, you haven't seen it live, but it pops there. I haven't pressed F5 there. So you have to believe me now that this, this works. Let me uh, yeah, go to the... Uh, Slides again. I think this is good. So I hope there's only one question left. Uh, naming who is that guy standing in front of you? My name is Fabian. I'm Microsoft MVP, Google Developer Expert. Uh, this is my Twitter handle. You can reach me if you have any questions. And at the end of the day, I hope that when you in the meeting and the customer or sitting in your cozy home office and asking you the question or the customer ask you the question, can we port this on mobile and desktop? You have the answer right now. Thank you very much. Yeah.